It is truly a privilege and an honor to be before you this afternoon and to bring to you the word that God has given me. Amen. Of the 15 minutes that I have, praise God, I really, truly, honestly wish that it only took me 15 minutes to put, to, put this together, but that surely, unfortunately, was not the case. But how many of us know that it takes time to make the food? Amen. Amen. Good food takes time. Yes. Praise the Lord. And I truly believe that this is good food this afternoon. And I pray that in the 15 minutes that you feast on this, that this would not just fill you. In other words, it would not just be another sermon, but that it would nourish your spirit. Amen. So let us just quickly pray. God, thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence, Father, to open up your word, Lord God, that has life, oh God, that carries life and brings about deliverance. Your very word tells us that we shall know the truth mm -hmm. and the truth shall set us free. Yeah. And so, Father, I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that as I proclaim your word, oh God, that it would carry freedom to your very people in this place, oh God. I pray for freedom, oh God, from any lie from the enemy, any shackle and any bondage in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would take control, take residence and have your way in this place in your precious holy mighty and majestic name we pray amen. Amen. amen praise the lord my message this afternoon to support the overall theme of this conference is entitled it's too good but it's true mm -hmm. i will be drawing my message from two different scriptures romans chapter 5 verse 1 and 2 and galatians chapter 3 verse 14 I will be reading from the New International Version, and if you have that scripture, you may go with me now. Romans chapter 5, 1 and 2 writes, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Galatians 3, 14 tells us he redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come down to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Amen. How many of you guys have been in a situation where it seemed like something was a little bit too good to be true? Maybe you met someone and things were a little bit too perfect. You know, they had the perfect family, the perfect job, perfect home perfect finances, everything looked good. Or maybe it was an offer that was given to you. And it had a lot of benefits, but they said there was no cost. Or maybe it was even a story that someone shared with you. Again, it was too good to be true. Either way, in the back of our minds, we're telling ourselves there must be a catch. <laughs> there must be some type of fine print. I think a lot of us watch television, and I think of the example of the commercials where they're advertising medicine. And they usually have an individual or a couple or a family smiling and so dandy and enjoying the activities of life. But as we're mesmerized by the activity going on in the commercial, there's always that monotone voice in the back mm -hmm. reminding us of some possible side effects. Yeah. <laughs> But that is what the world gives. Amen. However, when it comes to God, there is no catch. Right. <laughs> Praise God. There is no fine print. It just is what it is. Right. Yeah. Right. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's just too good. But it's true. Brothers and sisters, this is redemption. This is the story of redemption. There are several words that define the word redeemed and redemption, but I just want to focus on two words this afternoon. One being to recover and one being to buy back. The word dis re recover means to return something back into its normal state of health, its normal state of mind or strength, and it, or it can also mean to make up for. So to put this word into context, Christ came to recover our broken relationship mm -hmm. with God to make us right with him again. To make this personal, I think of a story when my best friend and I were at odds with one another and we weren't speaking. And I mean, everybody knows that we're two peas in a pod. And all of a sudden, we're not talking and we're enemies. It got so bad that it got to a place where it was my pastor, who's here today, who introduced me, had to come as our in-between and as our mediator to recover that relationship. 
He had there had to be a third party in the midst. Come on, set it up. And so it is, Jesus was our third party mm -hmm. to recover that relationship that was once broken with our Redeemer. Uh-huh. I don't know about you, but aren't you glad that we are no longer enemies of God right. because of what Christ Jesus did? Right. Now, the second definition of the word redeemed or redemption is to buy back. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two interesting aspects about this word. How many of us can really see ourselves buying back something that we gave away or that we sold? I mean, there had to be a reason why we gave it away in the first place. It could have been a car, a piece of jewelry, or maybe some clothing. Why would we want it back? But God who owned us, God who created and formed us, did not even give us away and had every reason to. He wasn't the one that sold us, but we sold ourselves oh, to sin oh and to death. My God. But still, he bought us back. Mm. And so when I think of this, I think to myself, who am I? What am I? Isaiah says, oh, wretched man that I am. Mm. Who can free me mm. from this body of who are we? I think I'm sinful and I'm disobedient and wretched by nature, but he would still want me back. My God. Again, this is too good, but it's true. It's true. <laughs> the second aspect of the word buy back is when something is lost. So imagine you lose something that was very valuable to you. Think about some things that are valuable to you. It could be jewelry, it could be a phone, a car. And all of a sudden you go online and it's being sold? Mm -hmm. It's on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, we were on Amazon. My God. We were on Craigslist. My God. <laughs> oh my God. And it's being sold in the same condition that you lost it. Mm. The worst part about it is that not only is it being sold, but it's being sold for more than what you purchased it for in the beginning. My Lord. I don't know about you, but if that was the case, I would just buy a brand new one right. instead of going and buying it back. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it is with us in God. He lost his most prized possession. My Lord. His creation, the world. He lost it to the world and its fleeting sins. Because of what we saw with our carnal eyes was so much better than our creator. Because it looked good and it smelled good and it felt good. We were lost. But he wasn't about to give up. The only thing, though, that was able to pay for us that was lost was his only begotten son, My Lord. Jesus Christ. Bring it on. Now, there was no animal yes. or other sacrifice yes. that was enough. Mm. Yeah. to pay for this. Now let's go back to scripture. We read in the beginning, Galatians chapter 3, verse 14. It says, He redeemed us yes. in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come down to us, the Gentiles, through Christ Jesus. Now he brought us back to receive this blessing of Abraham. And we may ask, what was this blessing? This blessing, besides it being Isaac, was justification meaning we were made right with God. We were made righteous. But the only way to receive this is by faith mm. in Jesus Christ. My, Lord. My first lady told me one way that I remember the word justification is just as if we never sinned. My God. <laughs> so what am I saying? What I'm saying is that righteousness or justification is only received by faith by believing in Jesus Christ. It's nothing that we do. It's nothing that we can do. But it's only by believing in the Son, Jesus Christ. I think I heard somebody say, mm, this is too good to be true. Yes. But it is. <laughs> Let's go back to scripture. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. It says, therefore, since we have been justified through him, by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is not what I'm saying. This is what the word of God declares. So some of you are probably trying to make sense of this in your mind. You're thinking, okay, so what you're saying is, in order for me to be righteous, in order for me to be justified, in order for me to be right with God, all I have to do is believe? Yes, that is exactly what I am saying. 
And this is why redemption is too good, but it's true. Yes. <laughs> this is the gospel, brothers and sisters, and many of us, including myself, have been guilty of complicating it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here is where our famous scripture comes to play. And if you know it, please say it with me. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. So all we have to believe is in his son to be justified. And it's because of this justification in Christ that we now have salvation and we have this eternal life. So I want to encourage somebody today to stop working to be righteous, stop working to be justified, stop working to be made right with God, because that's what Christ came to do. He is the redeemer, and only he can recover that relationship that we once had with God. Only he can buy us back. So stop trying to fix something that's no longer broken. My Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of us may be at a place right now where we feel distant or we feel disconnected from God. Have you ever been in that place? Mm -hmm. right. Right. Whether you sinned or you didn't sin, you just stopped praying for a couple of days and I don't know, I don't feel right. close anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't feel connected. There's a distance. But I want to remind you that God loves you. You can't make him love you because he already does. But if you want this relationship with him to be right, all you have to do is believe in his son. Some of you may be asking, so how do I believe in his son? John 1, 1 tells us, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So what I'm saying is in order to believe in his son, we have to believe in his word. That's mm -hmm. good. That's good. So you may feel like you're disconnected or you're unloved, but I believe the word that tells me that no love, nothing can separate us from the love of God. That's right. Lord. Nothing. Some of us may feel defeated, but the word tells me that I am more than a conqueror. Ooh. Some th some of us are may feeling that we're not good enough. But the word tells me that I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made. Yes. Or maybe you feel downcast. Maybe you feel alone. I am the Lord your God and I will never leave you nor forsake you. But once we start believing the word. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. We activate our faith. That is how we are righteous. That is how we are justified. And that is how we are made right. So don't be deceive don't allow the enemy to deceive you yes it does sound too good it sounds too basic and it sounds too elementary but it's true yeah hallelujah there's a song that says i've been redeemed by the love of my father i've been redeemed by the hand of my maker lovingly saved grace made its way for me and now i am redeemed and with these very words, I want to declare to you that you are redeemed, yes. that you are recovered, yes, that you yes. are justified, yes. that you are made right with yes. God. Not because of yes. what you did oh, or what yes. you're going to try to do, here. but because of Come what Christ now. has already yes. done yes. in you. Nice. Yes. Yes. Nice. Yeah, it's too good. Mm. It's too good. Mm. Yes. There's no catch. Mm. Mm. There's no fine print. Ooh, my Lord. Mm. Mm. It just is what it is. Yes. It's too good, but it's true. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. Amen.